knowing where to start is hard, and, and I don't want to get carried away here, but I think he did so much in this game. From His pressing was fantastic. He was often the highest player up the pitch passing, but then when Arsenal would... Uh, or pressing, sorry. But then when Arsenal would build up from the back, he was the one dropping deep and helping to um, progress the ball up the field. He He was sprinting everywhere without the ball. He was kind of just doing that thing where he channels Lacazette and, and, and Saka just to be in the right spots defensively without the ball. And um, he was a constant outlet. This is one of those things that he always does, is like always showing between the lines, pouncing on opponents' heavy touches defensively, like just always being aware on when he can intercept passes and just dispossess players. Dribbling was very good. Um, and especially as the game wore on, like especially in the second half, everything went through him like he was like the point guard he was like everything goes through him everyone looks for him on every possession he dribbles past multiple players he plays through passes and he's press resistant as always again like just just great and then he was involved in obviously the goals in some capacity key pass or hockey passes hockey assists on two of them and there was one in the 86th minute and this kind of was a trend to me because, like, one of the things with Odegaard at Real Sociedad was that he would refuse to play the easy pass. So, like, if there's a pass on, he just kind of doesn't really want to hit that pass because he's like, let me see if I can find something better. And um, there was one in the 86th minute that I thought he played a pass that no one saw. Like, if, if you if you freeze framed it even on the TV, and like, I had, if I looked at it for like just stared at it, I wouldn't have even seen that pass. And he finds the pass. And um, just, again, his touches, his passing, everything was great. So I thought, uh, again, it wasn't necessarily easy early on. Like, they were down three goals. And and, uh, they had a bit of uh, trouble struggling to build up facing West Ham's kind of mid-block and their zonal press. But they grew into it. And um, they got themselves out of a hole. They didn't win. But this was an awesome motor guard performance. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, the... the Premier League, the hype around him now, like the Premier League fans and pundits and media, they all now understand why Real Madrid and La Liga fans were so high on this kid. They now get it. Uh, and there was a good stat after the game that Odegaard completed seven passes into the box in open play today, the most by any Arsenal player in a single game this season. And I looked at his uh, shot created actions since he's arrived at Arsenal. And he's Far and away, um, the player with the most shot created actions at Arsenal since since he's arrived, and so he's like I, I listened to your podcast with uh, Phil Ball yesterday, Keon, and um, I found it interesting what he was saying. Like, you just give this kid the baton, and he'll he'll do it. Like, you just got to trust him, and that's what Arteta and Arsenal have done. They've given him the keys and allowed him to do his thing, and now he's thriving, and so. Uh, it's always obviously a question of can you give that level of responsibility to just one single player who's not Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid, but uh, he's certainly he certainly proves he's a he's a different breed when when he has that continuity when he has that confidence like he's he's another level. Well, part of the reason, like I, I asked Phil a question like with a lot of intent behind that question to just get an answer publicly from somebody who knows him on some level like he type type person that saw Odegaard regularly uh they live in the same neighborhood his 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 son um played some football with him at at some point I don't so but there's like a tight-knit community and uh I wanted to like ask like what do you say like to people who because like I was reading the replies to your tweet uh I don't know like and you had several tweets I don't know exactly which one it was but the one something about it was obviously something about Odegaard praise or something. That he's oh, I, good enough to be good enough to important member of Real Madrid. Oh, that's right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's the best player at Arsenal, and then people are like, "Oh, well, Cruz and Modric, you're not going to replace Cruz and Modric." Well, the thing is, it was so. There was there was people who said that. Then there was people who still somehow go at his character because of like labeling him impatient. Um, there's also a faction like just because. Like, oh, the the ones who say you can do it at Arsenal, but you can't do it at Real Madrid. I, yeah, you know, we've had yeah. this discussion. Like, we've seen all of the starters that Real Madrid have had in the past who play heavy minutes over the years who are far inferior to Martin Odegaard. So I don't like that argument at all. Like, I just, yeah. like, it, it's it's also belittling to, to, the, to the other clubs. And I'm not saying Arsenal is a great club right now or it's a big club or anything. But, like, look, they're not 
they're not playing it's it's they're not playing like fifth division in Canada. You know what I mean? It's not like so these players are doing good <laughs> things. If if like let me put it this way. If you wanted to sign Odegaard right now as a Real Madrid, you know, it, it like if you're a Real Madrid and you didn't own Odegaard and you wanted to sign him right now, he's going to be extremely expensive. And um, you already have him. So I, I just think it's an easy choice to bring him back. And I think he he spoke today, was it today or yesterday, where he was asked about his future. And I think Lucas is posting some reports now um, that Fabrizio Romano posted about Bale and, and Odegaard. But, um, but Odegaard said that, um, you know, we're going to see at the end of the season. And, and, and in his words, he said, what's important to me is development. Stability. Stability, that's what that's the word. Stability and development. Yeah. And um, he always says stability. I just think like Real Madrid fans need to like sometimes my point to Phil was sometimes we invent things that maybe don't even exist. Like this drama and this feud that it's like Zidane versus Odegaard. Like I just think that sometimes we forget that the club is probably happy that he's playing well because it's beneficial to them ultimately that he's doing well because you can um, you can bring him back as a much more polished player than as opposed to if he was playing once a month. Also, this is the another point I wanted to make about Real Madrid's midfield. I absolutely do not deny the greatness of Modric and Kroos. You know, every podcast is just us swooning about those two. Uh, but Modric does slow down, you know, every few games. He has games where he just looks like he just needs to sit down for a second and maybe save himself for the apex of the season. Certainly those are games that Odegaard can play. Also, there's a... There's a there's a variable in Zidane's lineups in that there are three sure starters in the midfield, but the fourth one is a huge variable. It can either be a right winger, which Odegaard can play, but it can also be a diamond, which Odegaard can play. It can be a fourth central midfielder, which Odegaard can play. He can play all three of those roles. And, um, and even if he doesn't start every time in that fourth role, he can certainly play heavy minutes in that. So I, I just, you know, I don't deny that he's not as good as Moritz and Cruz. I don't dispute that. But I'm just saying, like, just because that is that is a fact doesn't mean he doesn't have a place. Yeah, that's that's nailed on. And I think the one other thing, too, which you kind of touched on there, is he if Real Madrid were to buy him, he'd be really expensive. So may, assuming that Isco leaves in the summer because he has one year left on his contract and the way he's been treated, everything points to the fact that he wants to leave. So assuming Isco leaves, you have four midfielders in the squad. So even if you sell Odegaard, you're going to have to pay insane money to get a quality replacement, money which we don't have. So you might as well keep one of the best young players in the world. It just doesn't make sense for Real Madrid to sell him. Now, obviously, Odegaard's going to have a say, and I think that's what worries me more than anything is what Odegaard wants. But he's been vocal in the past about saying his dream is to start and play for Real Madrid and win La Liga with Real Madrid. So I think as long as he's given a plan and given reassurance, I think he'd be okay with the stability of staying at Madrid for a decade. But that being said, he probably doesn't have much confidence in Madrid after this summer with some of the promises they likely made and then didn't fulfill. So uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see. But I, I find it interesting that he keeps bringing up stability. He, I think he's sick of moving around. I think he just wants to stay in one spot now. Yeah, and that's fair. Like, and that's the other thing. Like, he, he's on his fourth year loan now, in a row, and we have the audacity to call him him impatient for that. This is four years of we're just throwing him around different teams, and yeah. And the other thing is, I wanted to bring in Holland into the discussion for a second, which, um, it's a possibly a straw man argument. I, I but I just want to bring him in the discussion for the sake of a point. Um. Holland has said, to, I I don't know if it was today or yesterday, where he said he was asked like where his future team is going to be, and he said I don't know, but there's one condition who that team has to want me, and um, and I just think like if, if you're Real Madrid and it, and you want Holland, can you guarantee him a starting position? Can you? I and I just have say, to. Well, I know, but but where? <laughs> Tell me where. That's that's my question. Like, yeah. So, in almost any other team in the world, he's starting every single game. Uh, but I don't know if you get that at Real Madrid, and I and I also think like there's there's a direct. I think there's a universe where you because of Odegaard's pull, 
you can also get Holland too. It's not obviously yeah. that simple, but it's just one factor, one of many. But um, I just think that there's a universe where you can have both. And there's also a universe where you don't have either because uh, you just got it. You just, you might get this wrong. And I'm just a little bit worried about that. Oh, yeah. Because this is not to and me, I this think... is not, sorry, Matt, one more thing. This is not yeah, the yeah. same as, as you missed out on Atra or you missed out on Kovacic. You missed right. out on Teo Hernandez. It's not that. This is something greater. This is something bigger than that, I think. Yeah, to use the American term, this is a franchise player. This is who you build around. And yeah. so for that reason, I think I wrote that article like two or three months ago, like decisions to define a decade that Real Madrid really have huge decisions this this coming summer that will be, will have ramifications for years. And I think... Part of that is the Odegaard Holland thing. Like, you can use that duo and you can completely reshape this team uh, to play to their strengths and build around them. But that means you're going to have to maybe cut ties with some legends and maybe completely reshape the formation and reshape the playing style. And it, does that mean you depart? Does, does that mean you part ways with Zidane, or do you keep him and have him? kind of buy into this new philosophy like that's the type of decisions that have to be made and i think for a guy like holland who is a franchise player like if you're purchasing him you're playing him to start him and you're building around him so people got to go and the formation's got to change that's just the way it is you're you're building a new team well with every short-term benefit there's usually a long-term consequence and i think if you if you're obsessed with running mortgage into the ground now for a couple years before he retires and you lose out on your next central midfielder for the next decade, then I, you know, it's, yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow. 